All right, guys, welcome back to Brandon PDCGO a video. Today, guys, we're going to be back into the expanded format, and we're going to be looking at one of my favorite decks to play in expanded, and that is going to be Greninja. Um, it's also kind of one of like the trolliest expanded decks to play because you know a lot of people don't like it. But Greninja here um, is a fun deck. Last time I looked at Greninja in expanded, we used the Detective Pikachu with it, but now we're going to be playing a different version of the deck. We're going to be using Green's Exploration within the deck to help set up. This is kind of the new hype for Greninja. I've seen a lot of different lists using greens for Greninja right now and it does seem to revive Greninja. Greninja might have potential now. Um, I feel like a lot of the big t uh, tag team decks really did kind of hurt Greninja's you know popularity a lot. Um, Picarom I think you know kind of creams Greninja but now that we have Mew 3 is arguably like the best expanded deck right now. Shadow Stitching is really good against Mew and like all pretty much auto wins a lot of the time. So yeah this is my uh, expanded Greninja greens build that I've got. This is one of my favorite decks to play right now. Since I've been kind of sick and I haven't really been able to make videos and record, um, I've kind of just been grinding expanded and just playing around with this Greninja deck just to get some wins and stuff like that. So before I get on the video, of course, shout out to our sponsor, Car Driving TCG. As always, guys, if you're ever in any need of any PDCGO codes, if you're trying to get um, Hidden Fates codes or, you know, Unified Minds codes, or if you're trying to get a Broken Bonds pack codes now that Dedenne GX's value has gone up, you can get them over at Cargo TCG. They do have other Pokemon TCGO code related stuff too, like Pokemon GX codes, obviously. If you're trying to get Mew 3 codes or Tina Chomp codes, or maybe if you're trying to get sleeve codes or stuff like that, you can head over to Cargo TCG and get all your PDCGO code a goodness over there. And if you get anything from there, make sure you use my discount code CODELDF at the checkout for a 5% discount on your order. Uh, supports the channel, helps yourself out, supports Car Cavern TCG. It's a woman for everyone. So yeah, shout out to Car Cavern TCG and use code LEF. All right, let's look at the list. So once again, I have played this deck quite a bit. So I've kind of gotten a handle of it. I've perfected my list to my liking. And uh, this is the finalized version that I've come up with for a Greens Greninja and Expanded. And this is, again, I think a really cool deck now. So the idea of Greninja is obviously very simple. You get Frogadier in play, Water Duplicate, get all your Greninja boys in play, go from there. Uh, once this deck sets up, it's really hard to stop. A lot of people do not like playing against Greninja because it's very trolly and it's kind of hard to beat if you, you know, let the deck set up. If you have a slow start, then you kind of lose a lot of the time. Uh, this is the list I've gone with. I've seen a lot of different lists online. Um, and this is the one that I've become kind of most comfortable with and the one that I like the most. So we, we can use Green's Exploration now to help us set up. Since we have no other abilities in the deck outside of Greninja Break and Starmie, we can use Green's Exploration to kind of set us up here. We can Green for Dive Ball, maybe, you know, Tool Cards, Supporter Cards, any item card we need. We can use Green to set us up. And uh, that's pretty much the idea of the deck is using Green's Exploration to set up your deck much like greens in, in standard it's the same kind of concept we're just setting up with greens um and it's a pretty simple idea um and this is the list i've come up with i've seen some people use like tapu fini in the deck i've seen some people try out artillery in the deck for draw consistency this is what i've kind of just used i've just gone with a 1-1 starmie line and the 4-4-4-3 greninja line pretty straightforward stuff um and i've creamed a lot of expanded decks with this deck because this is pretty much my go-to ladder grind deck right now uh we go to the items now we got four dive balls, uh, two Evo Soda to evolve our stuff. Pretty simple. I am playing two Pokecoms. The reasoning for this is because if we have any Frogadiers in our hand and we're trying to do water duplicates, we can Pokecom put back the Frogadier into the deck. That's quite literally why the Pokecoms are in the deck. I think this card actually helps you a lot. There's been so many times where I've had frogs in my hand and I have no way to put them back in the deck. So the Pokecom, great card. I got one stretcher, one rod in the deck, two, three via seeker. I've decided to keep it simple. We aren't really, we're, we're playing so many supporters. We generally don't even really need versus seeker. Like maybe even just running two is fine. And then fitting in like another card of your choice. Uh, like a second star you I've seen some people use. Uh, but really via seeker is still really good. Um, now I've actually gone with a uh, Dazzle Machine for my ace spec card. This is mainly just here. I like it better than computer search. Getting back like dive ball stadium or green or anything or stretcher rod it's just really good uh, i got two blowers of course for tools and garb one stretcher one rod uh i've gone with two brooklyn hills uh to find your frokies early on it's a really important stadium card and also one copy of silent lab i know we have shadow stitching but silent lab is <laughs> still really really good when we don't want to do shadow stitching especially a lot of times where you want to go moonlight slash and i am playing a lot of supporters uh, we got simple stuff like Cynthia, Juniper, and I've, a lot of lists I saw do not play Juniper. I'm still playing it because there's still times where Juniper can actually be really good. Um, I got teammates in the deck. Of course, we got three, four greens to set us up, and 
we are playing an Ace Trainer. This is a card that I've seen a lot of lists also not play, but this is still a really good card in Greninja, in my opinion. Um, I've got two Choice Band, one Spend. I've favored more for Choice Band, just because tag teams are more popular now, so it's still better than Muscle Band. Muscle Band is still good, though, to do that damage to non-GXs. we got four Splash Energies and six Basic Water. Um, yeah, this is it for my Greninja list here in Expanded. I really do like this deck. Again, it's the deck that I've been playing the most in Expanded for the past couple weeks, just grinding the format with this deck. Because this Green's Greninja deck kind of revives Greninja. Now that Mew 3 is really popular now, uh, Shadow Stitching is really good. So yeah, let's go hop some matches with the deck and see in action. All right, guys, here we go. Let's get some games with Greninja. And I've gotten this deck quite a bit, so hopefully we get good results. And it looks like our first match is, I'm going to say, Fire deck. Which is kind of hilarious. This, yeah, this should be good. Let's see if we uh, win the coin flip. We do not. But fire, pretty good matchup because water beats fire. We'll see if they're playing a Reshizard deck or not. I don't really know how good Reshizard really is in expanded right now. Like I know it still has like Kiawe and Volcanion. The actual Reshizard is actually pretty good too. But we'll see. Uh, no, it looks like they're playing some kind of Charizard deck, which is fine. Charizard. We can beat very easily by just doing Shadow Stitching. Shadow Stitching is just such a good attack. It's pretty insane. Now we'll see how we start here. We got a Froakie, and there's a Frog. We do get another green in our hands, which is pretty good. Let's get that turn one green. We can also end them. We do need to get an energy here, of course, for our Froakie. So we might need to uh, do something about that. Oh, they're playing Nidoran in the deck. I have no clue what I'm up against here. No clue at all. Still though, Charizard, not a big threat. I guess Nido Queen might be more of a threat than Charizard because it's a little harder to deal with. But Charizard, definitely something we can take out. Okay. Let's see what they do. So intent pass. <laughs> okay, what do we draw? Greninja. Okay, we'll just do green, I guess, for Brooklet. Brooklet and I want to say teammates, cause like if I get knocked out, we can teammates. You never know; they might knock me out. <clears throat> they have like a rare candy play here. We could see Froki get knocked out, so maybe we should prepare for that. We'll just say, alright, well you knock me out, I have a teammate in my hand. Seems pretty good. We're probably gonna, we're probably gonna end up ending them just because we need to get a uh, energy. We could maybe run Professor's Letter in this deck too, if we need to like green four in energy, because green getting you an energy is actually really good. So we could maybe play like Professor's Letter or something. Need a rain coming down. Yeah, just a pass. All right. Still didn't draw an energy though. That's fine. Let's broke it here for another Froki. We are gonna end them, and we're looking to find an energy here. We do get there. Not terrible either. We have a couple of ways to get Pokemon into play. No supporter to follow up with, which is not amazing, but whatever. We get all our frogs in play, which is still really good. The fact that my opponent hasn't evolved any of their like Charmanders or Dittos yet is really good because if we can get Greninja Break in play soon, we can start to Giant Water Shirk in these things, knocking them out, which is really nice. Oh, they're going to get Charmeleon. Are they going to play Charmeleon's ability, though? They are not going to. Okay. All right, let's see if they knock out my Frogadier. I don't know if they're playing Triple Energy or not. They can always retreat, though, into Charizard. Well, it looks like they are going to do that. Our hand is not the greatest either, in all honesty. We don't have any energy to attack them, which is not great. We can get a Greninja to play, though, but not having another supporter is just fantastic. Don't know where my supporters are chilling at, but yeah, if you would uh, come to my hand, that'd be great. I could Shadow Stitching them for 100 damage here. Assuming we draw an energy, of course. We can also just knock out the Charizard. <coughs> Alright, let's see, what are we gonna draw? Ooh, perfect. 
Perfect, perfect, perfect. Our hand is pretty good too. I like to say we can get two Greninjas into play right at this moment, which is nice. Die Ball, get Greninja. See if we can get three Greninjas into play. That'd be really good. Because once again, once we get Greninja break in play, it's going to be pretty nice. Yeah, I might as well do that. Sure. Shadow Stitching for 100 does seem pretty good. Oh, no, 120, actually. Yeah, I leave with 10 HP. And we can end them. Hopefully, we do not whiff an energy here. I'm a little worried that we might, but I got confidence we won't, and we do not. Nice. And we get the Dive Ball. We have a green, too, which can get us two more Greninja Breaks next turn. We also have an Ace Trainer, which we can always play. I think the only issue right now is we don't have Starmie in place. So we got to be a little careful with our energy discards, but we do have our Super Rod, too. But I'd say overall, though, this is pretty good. And before they play Blacksmith or Welder and knock me out, that would be pretty bad, but they can't play an ability, so they can't even play Needle Queen's ability to search their deck for a Pokemon. So, that's nice. Got Ultra Balling here. Like, I'm a little worried about Needle Queen just because it actually is a little bulky, but we'll see. I mean, I'm tempted just to knock out Charizard here with Shadow Stitchy instead of just knocking out Giant Water Shuriken and then kind of seeing where it goes from there. But yeah, they can't play any abilities, so unless they have a Blacksmith or a Welder here, they aren't going to be attacking me anytime soon. Oh, they do have a Cynthia. They have 21 cards left, interestingly enough. I think, honestly, we're just going to be doing a lot of Shadow Stitching this game. Stopping them from doing Needle Queen's ability, stopping them from Charizard's ability is insane. <laughs> wow, they might get three Charizards in play. Never mind. Alright, let's green... Or die ball, die ball. All right, we're definitely in a pretty good spot right now. I would like to say. Get Greninja break and play. The only thing that can knock me out is with Nido Queen. Another basic water energy. I could have went for a double giant water shuriken, which would have been ten times better. Still though, getting all these green ninja breaks in play is really good. As you can see, guys. Green Exploration is super good at finding you all of your Greninjas. So we can Water Sure can knock out you. We can also just knock out the active. Yeah, I think we just knock out the active, to be honest with you. I don't know, maybe I should have knocked out the Charmander, but still, I think knocking out the active is pretty good. Force them to have to bring something in that we can bait into knocking out. Ooh, looks like we actually can go for that double giant Water Sure can after all. We can actually just knock out this Needle Ran. Yeah, this is pretty good, as you can see. The Ace Trainer might not be usable, but that's fine. Same with the green. But yeah, this is pretty good, I would like to say. All we're really missing again, guys, right now is Starmie. But yeah, I don't really know. Yeah, my opponent even brings in the Charizard. I think they've just given up. Yeah, we'll establish this in there for 80. Again, if they have Welder Blacksmith, they can knock me out here, but we have Splash Energy on. We can just go on the other Greninja Break. Yeah, they can see the game. As you can see, guys, a Greninja Break, very good at taking out ability-based decks. Do they have triple energy? 18 energy. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of fire energy to play. But yeah, Greninja Man, it's too good sometimes. Well, not even sometimes, just all the time. When Greninja sets up multiple Greninja Breaks, it's just... It's like, GG, what do you do at that point? You know what I mean? Let's see if we can play against a tag team deck, though, next. I want to see how we would pair against a tag team. Maybe if we run into Mew 3, that would be pretty nice. No, we're up against a grass deck. My dog, what are you talking about? We'll see what kind of grass deck this is. Let's see, we start with here. Ooh, Froki, okay. Hmm. I could broke it for star me or star you. I'm tempted to do that. We'll see what kind of grass deck this is. <coughs> oh, shiny Genesect. All right, it's not too threatening then. So we get Starry here. We get star me in a play, but then we don't have green. Hmm. We can always like stretch her rod the star me back on the deck. I guess not the end of the world. I think like not having green. No, not gonna, not worth it. I think it's not worth it to evolve a turn to star me. 
All right, let's see what type of grass deck this is. They're gonna nest ball for, okay, so they're playing Venusaur Genesect. Don't really know how good this deck is in Expanded, but we'll see. I think once again, Shadow Stitching could be really good here. Getting rid of Venusaur's ability is pretty powerful. And ooh, June Evo Soda. We don't even need to get rid of this hand in all honesty. We can kind of keep it. Kind of just chill with our hand here. It's pretty good. We have teammates, which is I think the main appeal. All right, let's see if they get a turn two Venusaur along with a turn two Gaia Blaster knockout. That'd be pretty scary if they do get that, but we'll have to see if they do end up getting there. If not, we can uh, hopefully start to get some attacks off. I was worried they were going to be playing some kind of like Alolan Executor Rowlet deck. Honestly, we I've yet to look at Alolan Executor Rowlet expanded outside of the Mew 3 uh, Rowlet Vileplume deck. Uh, we haven't looked at it just kind of by itself, which I might do. There's a lot of interesting... Are you kidding me? He's playing DCE. <sighs> Bruh. Of course you have that in your deck. Of course. Ooh, that was a good draw. Tis was a pretty good draw. Okay. A little annoying that he has that random DC in his deck, which, I mean, really, my brother, do, do you really need to play DC? Uh, we'll just get Splash Energy and Dive Ball. Just get another Greninja down. We also want to have the Splash Energy on our Greninja at all times. No need to shadow stitching him. I guess we'll win for 60. This is fine. Then we knock him out. We can knock him out next turn regardless. I mean, he'll survive a giant water shirk and still though, I think it's better to hit him for 60. There's no need to shadow stitch him. You know what I mean? He's already going to knock me out because that DCE. A lot of the old Greninja lists used to play Enhanced Hammer. Kind of wish we maybe played that, but I don't know. I get like, it's not bad because you get rid of Prism Energies on like Mew 3s and stuff. And DCs are still good, but there's no room for Enhanced Hammer. I guess stuff like Max Potion would be good in here, too. Okay, well, let's see what my opponent goes for here. I don't know if I want a Teammates or Juniper. I'm very tempted just to go for the Juniper. Teammates won't really get me many stuff. I don't really know. We'll see. How much HP does this thing have? 70? Ooh. We can actually knock out the Bulbasaur with Giant Water Shuriken and then knock this guy out. I might actually just do that instead. Because then Shaman can't knock me out with Flower Storm. Okay. So. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I think I just take the knockout here and knock out the Bulbasaur and kind of leave him with no way to knock me out. So yeah, we're going to teammates for Evo Soda. What else? What am I looking for? Greninja. We needed an energy. Okay, this is pretty good. Uh, we'll just get rid of that choice ban. Really no sign of any any bigger threats, so yeah, we can just do this. Knock out you. Get a couple prizes here. Ooh, field blower. That might not be bad, assuming my opponent plays a tool. And again, we should live the turn here. I don't expect to get knocked out by Flower Storm. The only way you can do it is if he plays a bunch of max elixirs. There's a green. Can't play that. It's good Juniper bait, though. All right, there's an Oranguru. So it's for each basic energy. Okay. I was making sure it's not something like any energy. So I can't just randomly drop like a DC or something weird. I don't know. Again, as long as they just don't max elixir here, we should be fine to live the turn. We'll see. 
If we do live here, we're gonna get complete control of the game. We can also continuously knock out these Bulbasaurs. So, there's not much my opponent can really do about that. You gotta play the 70 HP Bulbasaur, man. It's not worth it to play a hollow Detective Pikachu Bulbasaur. I know it's tempting because it's, you know, IRL Bulbasaur looking thing, but no. Now he's actually gonna retreat into the Oranguru. Which is fine. Do they have an energy? They actually haven't played much. They haven't played a support yet, have they? No, they haven't. We'll see if I've gotten an energy here. I'm assuming they want to attach an energy onto, like, Shaman or something. We could actually just double giant water shuriken the shaman. I'm tempting. It's tempting. We can also do it to a Ranguru and then knock out whatever he brings in the active with Moonlight Slash. Assuming we can get a Greninja Break, of course, off this Juniper. Yeah, they do find an energy. Just a pass. I think I'm just going to settle to stay in the active then. If my opponent's not going to... Yeah, I think I'm just going to settle for the active. Or maybe not. Should we stretch her here? I don't know. I think I'll save the stretcher. So we can knock out the Shaman. I don't know. I still think that Bulbasaur is a threat. I mean, I'm fine with just knocking out Bulbasaur, to be honest with you. Just make it so you just can't get the Venusaur in play. The Venusaur is more threatening than that Shaman right now. The Shaman gets knocked out very easily. It's not really too scary. We can just Moonlight Slash him for 60. And then we just win next turn if he doesn't bench anything. I don't know. The option to knock out that Shaman is tempting, but, like, the Bulbasaur is still, like, a threat. If he gets that Venusaur in play... Things can get a little ugly. I think just make it so he just can't get the Venusaur in play is a lot better. My opponent would need still a lot to knock me out. This Shaman can't. They need a switch or a float and an energy to knock me out here to do 180 with Flower Storm. And it's not likely they'll even hit that, so. I'm pretty sure we're fine for now. I'm pretty sure we'll be safe. Do they have a switch? <coughs> <coughs> Sorry for the coffee. And once again, still sick. <coughs> But I still want to get content out. Oh, they're going to Lysander me. Okay. Is that game? That is game. That is indeed game, guys. Alright, we just beat a Grass deck with a Greninja deck. And usually when you see Grass when you're playing Greninja... Usually it's a big yikes, but uh, as you can see, we're just going to go Giant Water Shirk and Moonlight Slash and GG. It's not even grass can take out Greninja Break. That's how good it is. Nah, but you can kind of see, guys, just how good Greninja really is. Not even not even a grass deck can really take you out, even when you're weak to grass. And boom, that's game. All right, let's see. Are we going to get these Boundaries Cross Packs? No, we're very close. All right, well, see you guys in some more matches with the deck then. All right, guys, here we go. We're going to go continue with some matches with Greninja. See if we can be running against a tag team deck. And we'll see what this is. My opponent is playing a deck that has some different types in it. So this could be this could be a tag team deck. We'll see. We shall see. They got Mewtwo sleeves. They do indeed have Mewtwo sleeves, which is usually a good sign if they are going to play a tag team deck. You never know, though. Okay, let's see what we start with here. How are we looking? Double Froki. Okay, not bad. Not a bad hand at all. I will take it. Oh, they just concede the game. What were they playing? You can't tell. Alright, well, maybe they were playing Mewtwo because they just saw the Greninja and they're like, oh, wow, wow. Yeah, I'm playing against, like, my worst matchup. No, thank you. I'm conceding. So there you go. Greninja's too OP. And, oh, wow, another fire deck. This time it looks like they are going to be maybe playing a Reshizard type of deck because they have water in the deck. So they're most likely playing Volcanion. Volcanian EX. Alright. We had a good hand last time. Can we duplicate it and have a, another good hand? Let's see. Yeah, okay, not bad. Double Froki is always good. 
do have a turn one green, which is pretty cool. We'll uh, see what type of deck this is. Most likely a fire deck, which again, if it is, I mean, what can I say? It's just Greninja beats it too easily. <laughs> All right. They are indeed playing a fire deck. All right. <laughs> Reshi's hard. It should be fine. They have a Fiery Torch. It's an interesting card. Hmm. <coughs> this matchup is fine even if they do spam a bunch of this stuff. Even if they build this thing up, I'm not too scared because once we kind of get Greninja's going, you know, we just kind of assault them. I mean, they could be playing maybe like a healing mechanism. That could be one thing that could hurt. But again, if we just hit him with a giant water shuriken, a choice made Moonlight Slash actually does knock them out in one hit, which is kind of nuts. We'll see what they do. I'm assuming they're going to get energy on this thing through Welder, Blacksmith, or through a turn one Kiawe. I could even try to bubble them. Doesn't really seem like a good idea, though. I think it's better to just hold on to the energy here. I think that's fine. They could draw a lot of cards, but at the end of the day, it's not going to matter. <laughs> All those fiery torches and scorched earth, it still doesn't matter. Are they, like, really digging for, like, a welder or something here? Okay, they finally got one. Surprisingly enough, welder isn't really that good in expanded. Which is kind of funny. It's just such a powerful card in standard, but, in, like, in expanded, it's, like, kind of mediocre. And let's see what else they do. They pass. Alright, what do we draw? Another green. That's a pretty good draw. So, I'm probably just going to get like a Brooklet Hill. And like a teammate here, assuming they knock me out. Just get a, probably another Froki. Or another Star. Eh, we can actually probably get a Skip Star and play. I mean, we could go for Bubble. Try to paralyze them by a turn. It honestly doesn't really matter, though. I think it's better just let them knock me out, and then we can play teammates. We'll see if the Brooklyn Hill stays in play. Nope, rip. You know, we'll see what they do here. We're probably going to need another Froki in play, though. Oh, Bill's analysis. <laughs> this is an interesting Reshizar deck, that is for sure. Hmm. I got a flint and a welder. So I actually do have the flare strike or double blaze me to knock me out here, which is pretty good. Make some kind of waste that, which is kind of nice. We'll see what they go for. Are they going to flare strike or are they going to double blaze? They could just outrage me for 30, which would be perfectly fine because then I don't get knocked out. I guess like the less prizes they take, the better. Like I still think the game is pretty winnable and really good, but like... I mean, I guess maybe they take less prizes, the better. But if they Flare Strike me here, they can't do Flare Strike again. Ooh, a Fighting Fury Ball coming down. We do have a Field Blower within our hand, though, so it's not the end of the world. We'll see what they decide to do here. And they will Flare Strike, knock me out. All right. How many energy in the discard pile? Four. I see we draw Super Rod. That's not bad. Oh, we did prize a Frogadier, though. That's actually pretty annoying and not very good, to say the least. All right, we're going to have the teammates then. I want to get Brooklyn Hill. Brooklyn Splash. I do want to maybe get, like, a Ace Trainer, though. Hmm. I need to get another uh, Froki down. Alright, let's just settle with this. Whatever. It's fine. As long as we have two energies. I don't know. I kind of wanted to get an Ace Trainer, though. Alright, here we go. Water Duplicates. Get two frogs in play. 
Unfortunately, prize one. Not much you can really do there. So my opponent has to like Ranger, Chandler, or something, or Double Blaze to knock me out. Is that a Magmar? Yes, it is. Let's see what they do. If Frogadier miraculously lives a turn and they don't want to waste their Double Blaze, pretty cool, but they'll most likely knock me out. I think we're going to green for Evo Soda and a supporter. We do need to get a supporter soon. I can't really be relying too heavily on teammates here. They actually could just knock me out with Flamethrower, which wouldn't be very fun. Oh, Alugia, what the heck? Oh no, maybe they are just going to double lace me. The Lugia is a little weird. And actually kind of annoying, because Lost Purge is not fun. So hopefully if they double blaze me, we do not have to worry about Lost Purge. At all. Ooh, a computer search. They already have 19 cards left in their deck. What would they get with computer search here, though? Another stadium. Okay. Hopefully they hit me with a double blaze. I really want them to not lost purge me. I mean, it'd be better in general if they do not knock me out, but we'll see. Hopefully I just not labs in the deck. I can't remember because we're going to need lab to get rid of this heat factory. Let's see what they do. They have 14 cards left. If I was playing a mill deck right now, they would be like decked out. Another Fiery Torch. And they can play all these cards. It's going to make my ends and stuff really good. Once we get rid of that Heat Factory, though. I don't even know what they're looking for at this point. Like, they've already attached. Okay, nice. They are going to waste their GX attack on me, which means we don't have to worry about Lost Purge, which is really good. Hopefully, we can draw something good here. Splash Energy. Not amazing, but I'll take it. We'll green for Evo Soda. So we do have the lab. Evo Soda Ace Trainer. Wow, we actually prized two Greninja. Our prizes are kind of annoying. Two Greninjas and a Frogadier. Yikes. Hmm. Yeah, this is fine. I could maybe get teammates too. I don't know. Go here. Go here. Do we want a super rod? No. I think we'll just Moonlight Slash for 120 damage. It's a good amount of damage to do. We can definitely knock this thing out next turn. Another heat factor. They have eight cards left. They might just deck themselves out if, like, that'd be, like, absolutely hilarious if they did that. But we'll see if they deck themselves out. So they can knock me out without rage if they want. Doesn't matter, though. We are a little, we are falling behind a little bit on prizes. But once we knock this thing out, we're going to take three of our prizes. So we are going to be even in prizes. We do need to lower their hand and hopefully maybe find lab to get rid of that heat factory. The Lugia is kind of a threat. It can one-shot Greninja Break, but without Lost Purge, I'm not too worried about it. Like, Lost Purge, I guess, you know, it doesn't give up a prize, but it just completely removes Greninja off the board. Ooh, another Reshi Zard. That could be our win condition. Taking out two Zards here might not be too hard to do. Oh, they're going to Versus Seeker. What are they going to get back? I'm guessing they're just going to, like, weld her to the Lugia. Oh, they're going to Blacksmith. I guess they're going to power up Charizard? I don't really know how I feel about that, but I ain't going to complain. We should be able to knock out the Charizard here. Do 
take three prizes, and if he attacks me the other one, we should be able to knock that one out too, which shouldn't be too hard. Okay, this has to be a really good turn for us here. Let's see, we draw. Okay. Not bad. Another Pokemon search option is really, really good. If we click the Greninja break, we want to be able, be able to just keep getting our Greninjas in play. 190 HP, so yeah, we can knock him out here. Field Blower. How much HP? 150. So yeah, he's, he's a goner. We can Rod. Nope. But we'll Ace Trainer. We gotta hold this Ace Trainer gives us a good hand. Which it does. Not bad. We do have Starmie. I think we can wait a turn to play that, though. Or we can douse the machine to bump that heat factory. Hmm. I kind of like that. But what would I get rid of? Like, I guess Dive Ball and Starmie are the only other two cards. But they do have a lot of energy in play already. They already have freaking... How many is this? Five. They have nine energy in play. And they have... No one to discard. Hmm. I don't know. There's too many important cards in my hand. Yeah, I don't think I want to do that. Let's just knock them out. Let's just take the knockout. Not going to bother bumping the heat factory. Ooh, not bad. Can we get to the frogadier? Ooh, <laughs> the other Greninja. Another die ball. All good cards. We'll see what else he has. He's only played one via Seeker. I don't know. The, the Ace Trainer probably gave him a good hand anyways. Not really. I don't know. I don't think it matters if we bump that stadium or not. I'm really, all we gotta do is just knock out one more Charizard. And we can win the game next turn as long as we don't get end. Yeah, I gotta be a Seeker. It's not good. Yeah, it didn't matter if we bump the stadium or not. It is good, though, that he has to attack me here with Charizard, most likely. Because we can win here. All we gotta do is just get Choice Band and a Giant Water Shirt. And... Well, I guess this... even if he, like, does another Bell, we have a Dows Machine. So just gotta hold it in the red card to Flesh Strike. So that'll knock me out. But, because the Greninjas are so OP, guys, this is indeed a game. We do win here. We go via Seeker Teammate. We die ball, Greninja break. I could still see us winning even if we weren't KOing him here, in all honesty. We just get teammates for Choice Band and. And I guess Super Rod, because why not? Giant Water Shuriken for 60. And yeah, that's a game. The frogs are just too good. The frogs are just too good. And maybe that Ace Trainer saved us because he couldn't weld her to the Lugia and attack me with it. I guess he could have attacked me with Make Mortar though. Don't know why I didn't just do that because I just won the game there, but I'm not gonna complain. As you can see guys though, the Greninja Green stack is pretty strong. And in my opinion, it's still a great deck. And as you can see, this is why I ladder grind with it. As you can see, I'm already getting pretty close to the AZ though I'm probably not gonna go for it because I don't really need AZ. But uh, yeah, I think I'll rather today's peace show video, guys, on the Greens Greninja deck. Um, honestly, guys, a really interesting deck now, and I think this deck gets a lot more better thanks to Mew 3, and potentially Fire maybe being better and expanded. Uh, you never know, someone might want to play Reshizard, because Reshizard with Volcanion lets you do insane high numbers with Flare Strike, but... You never know. Uh, I do think that uh, Green's Greninja is definitely a strong deck. I think it still suffers against Picarom. The Zoark matchup, Zoro Garb in particular, I think is still kind of 50-50. But overall, this is still a really strong deck. It's a great troll deck. It's a great ladder grind deck too. So yeah, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed, make sure you like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe down below here on the road to reaching 6,000 subscribers and 5,800 subs. And as always, check out our sponsor card and TCG down below. Use my code LDF to get a 5% discount on your order. Um, and follow me on Twitter down below. Bye-bye.